one left. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for a uh, our next installment in the uh, departmental deep dive series. My name is Tom. I will be your host tonight. Um, I am the Associate Director of Communications here in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Um, tonight, we are highlighting our Honors College. Um, this is definitely going to be a, a, a great event, and I know everyone is probably super busy and probably enjoying some of the nice weather. However, this is a good reason to come inside, hop on Facebook, and learn a little more about the uh, Bloomsburg University Honors College. However, before we go any further, uh, I'm hoping we can all do some, some brief introductions so the audience can meet some of our panelists, and we can start with Dr. Julie Vanderveer. Hi, I am Dr. Julie Vanderveer, and I'm director of the Honors College. Hi, Julie. And Julie, how long have you been at Bloomsburg? Um, since the dawn of time. The dawn of time. Okay, nice. All right. Uh, a little while. Bloomsburg was just a little puppy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Since 1994, but I've been director of the Honors College for the last four years. Okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Katie. Hi, I'm Katie McDonough. I am a sophomore early, early childhood and special education student, So, and I've been in the Honors Program since I was a freshman, so about two years now. Excellent. And, and where are you from? Hershey, Pennsylvania. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Excellent. excellent. I've heard of that before. Uh, Luna. Hi, uh, I'm Luna Alexander. I'm a sophomore in the honors program. Um, I'm from Wellsboro, Pennsylvania. And, and Luna, what's your major? Uh, I am a communication studies major with a focus in organizational communication. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Luna. Uh, Oriana. Hi, I'm Oriana. I am a senior biology major and I have a chem minor. And I'm from wow. the Scranton area. So from the Scranton office. area. Yes. <laughs> Home of the office. Yes. Uh, Jen. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen. I'm a senior. Um, I'm studying communication sciences and disorders, so like speech pathology. Um, I'm minoring in Spanish and linguistics, and I've been a part of the Honors College since I was a freshman. And Jen is also a, a distinguished tour guide and a veteran of many of these Facebook Live events, so you're, you all have probably seen Jen at some point in time. Uh, she's kind of a big deal around here, you know. Uh, Nellie. Hi, everybody. I'm um, the graduate assistant for the Honors College. Uh, this is my first year, um, and so I'm just very excited. Excellent. And, and where are you from, Nellie? I'm from um, I'm from Middle New Jersey. I'm Central New Jersey. <laughs> middle New Jersey. Yeah, Middle New Jersey. Okay, we'll go with Middle New Jersey. Great. Thanks. Is that like and, Middle Earth? Yeah, <laughs> that's actually kind of what I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sophia. Hi, I'm Sophia. I'm a sophomore nursing major um, in the Honors College. I've been in the Honors College for about two years now, and I'm from Rockway, New Jersey. Rockway, New Jersey. And Sophia, you are also a tour guide. Also another one of our, you know, I was hoping you were going to answer that. Yeah, so Sophia is, is another one of our very distinguished tour guides. So thank you, everybody. Um, we have a great event. Um, online tonight here. Uh, the event itself should take probably between 30 and 45 minutes. If anyone in the audience has any questions, please feel free to type them in onto the Facebook post and we will pose them to the group. Um, this is being recorded and uh, this should be a great event. Like I said, I encourage you to ask as many questions as you need. We have a great group of students here and uh, we're excited to get started. But without further ado, we will, I will turn it over to uh, Dr. Vandeveer here and we're gonna start with a quick uh, presentation and overview of the Honors College. Now, is this one, so is this presenting the way that I want it to? It is. All right. So that one of the things I want to tell you, talk to you about, uh, now it's not. We're good. But I still just have that one screen, right? Yep, we're good. You can, you can keep, keep going. Okay. Did you get a second screen there? Okay. Um, I have to say that I love these students who are here and I love the Honors College. And one of the things I would say is that education can do one of two things. It can not move you or it can move you profoundly. And the university can move you, but the Honors College can move you profoundly. And it can do it in different ways. There's a difference between the Honors College experience and the regular because for starters, and um, I wanna show you this, when you first come, 
you take classes in small groups and discuss things in ways that will make you excited, sometimes unhappy, but it will always make you think because we want your brain to be firing and we really kind of want to screw with your minds and make it interesting so that you always walk out of class going, where did time go, right? So that's the first thing. Only 20 students, we sit around a table, we have discussions, I get to pick the best professors at the university, and it's a really exciting experience. Now, one of the things that makes it really good is that every single class moves out of the classroom. So that, for example, you can see Luna in this picture, who is also um, in our group tonight. She's in the back there with her hat. And in this particular class, and in a minute, she will tell you how great it was. So that you started, it, you, this is one of your freshman choices. You can start off the year by climbing Mount Washington, which is one of the um, tallest mountains on the East Coast. And then you spend the semester talking about that in relation to what is the difference between empathy and leadership or to phrase it differently should luna have left her weaker compatriots on the mountain tied to a rock and made it to the top by herself what is her obligation to others to put her arms around them and say if we can only make it as far up as to the top of a flagpole that's how far we will go together. But see that sort of lesson, which is that it combines that in-class discussion with that out-of-class experience in the freshman classes, that's what makes it really unusual. I think the other thing I'd say, but it's not, you don't have to go climb a mountain, okay? It's just that every class we have for the freshmen, we want there to be some set sort of out-of-class experience. So that for another class, Sophia, you're on here, right? Just yes, nod. In her freshman class, what we did was we got involved in an immigrant community and, and we did just come to get these kids to college, right? We developed this SAT program and we started getting kids to college. And that's the thing that's so great about these honors classes is you don't just sit there with 300 people looking at PowerPoints unless there's a pandemic, okay? But if there's not a pandemic, then what we do is we take you places and you do things. Now, that's the core experience. However, once you do that, we then move along that. And here under experiences, one of the things it says is we will then have an intense experience. So that intense experience could be PLP, service and leadership, where you do are involved in seriously helping other people, or it could be research. Ariana, did you do research? Yes, I did. And was it the bomb? I fell in love with it so much that I applied to the master's program here to continue to do it. Jen, what about you? Did you do research? I did do research, yeah, and I also applied um, to a master's program elsewhere, so I'm looking to continue my um, research at a master's level as well. And real quick, what were your research projects? Just out of curiosity. So I'm a biology major. So I did research in the field of cancer biology. Okay. So my undergraduate thesis was on breast cancer cells and my graduate yeah. thesis is going to be on gastric cancer cells. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. What a great thing to study. All right. Excellent. What about you, Jen? Yeah, Jen. Yeah, mine was about studying um, autism in the aging population mm -hmm. and how we can better like diagnose autism within older people. And I, and I think one of the things you can see is that whether you're doing the service track or whether you're doing the research track, this is really the way that we interact and connect with others. And it's an education that not only is in the classroom, but is outside making a difference. You can also do an internship or a practicum. Is there anybody here who's doing that? Sophia, I imagine you will eventually do that. Yeah, I will eventually. Um... I'm the chair of that for the Honors Executive Board, and it's definitely a really cool opportunity to have um, to be able to do an internship or practicum outside of your regular coursework. And you don't have to do any of these. You can choose to do just one of them. And then, of course, the other one is the international experience. Katie, do you want to talk about that? I could talk about that all day, Dr. V. So, <laughs> um, like Sophia, I am the uh, international track chair for the Honors College for the Executive Board. 
And um, the travel opportunities that honors offers you is basically the, the shining jewel of an honors experience. Um, last, win well, not last winter, but the winter before that, the pre-pandemic times, um, I got the privilege to be able to travel with faculty and Dr. V and a whole bunch of awesome students who became some of my best friends on a three and a half week trip. And we hit like five countries in quick succession and it is one of the best experiences of my entire life. What countries? Uh, we were in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. We spent most of our time in Poland. We mm -hmm. were in Hungary and Budapest for a little bit. And we were okay. in Berlin, in Germany, obviously, for the tail end of the trip. Is that what all of you, Dr. Favorite? V? Yeah, oh, the last a, favorite is, a favorite is really hard. Probably Poland, just because we spent oh. the majority of our time there. And you, because you're there so long, you really learn the city like the back of your That's hand. Right. And mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you, it feels more like yours. Sure. Understandable. Great. That, wow. It's an amazing trip. Well, it is an amazing trip. And the other thing which I really think is worth saying is that it costs about the same amount as if you stayed in your parents' basement and took the classes online. And so you just have to decide if you want to stay in your parents' basement and not change your socks and watch too much TV, or if you want to travel around Europe. Now, it's not exactly the same cost. It probably costs about 300 to $700 more to get out of your parents' basement. But I would suggest that you might spend that much on pizza and a therapist if you were to spend that much time in your parents' basement, okay? <laughs> so that instead what you get to do, and I put this photo up because you can see all of our students here in this top one. The bottom one is actually not in Europe, that's at Knobles. And Katie is in, both of those pictures. And so one of the things you might have to do is find Katie, which is sort of like, where's Waldo? Um, because she is in both of those photographs. Um, but you take courses over winter from December 26th until January 20th that then take care of your requirements during the year so that you can graduate early or you can take a lighter course load or you can get a minor because you have gone and spent the winter term at a very low cost um, going to, to Europe. Now, with this, one of the things I have to say is that our alumni have done extremely well. And I think that I will pause at this minute and go to our two, which is, so Oriana, you are doing a master's degree, correct? And then what are you going to do? So, once I graduate with my master's degree, I plan on going to medical school. So I'll be taking the MCAT and applying for that this summer. And Jen, what about you? Yeah, so I definitely have aspirations to get my PhD after my master's. Um, so I'm not really sure where that will land me, but I'm hoping to work in the medical field and or research. So that our students are extremely successful, um, which makes me very happy. The only thing is, is I would like them to stay forever um, because I become very fond of them but they do come back for a variety of activities. Um, but our placement is very high and where they go to graduate school is very high. Um, and so this is just a list of some of the places that our students have gone and one of our honor students who just graduated is right there. All right, I will take it back to you, Tom, for the weather. Oops, sorry. Thank you, Dr. Van Veer. And so we do have uh, a couple questions out there from the audience here. Um, if you didn't sign up for the Honors College, is it too late? Ariana, you want to take that? Yeah, no, it is not too late. Um, we are accepting applications until May 1st, which is when you need to tell both Bloomsburg and the Honors College for sure if you are coming here. And we really hope that you do. Yes. Yes. Um, and then we had another question here. Do we have a lot of students um, in the Honors College that are also nursing majors? Sophia, do you want to talk about that? Uh, well, I definitely love both. I love nursing and the Honors College. And I feel like the things I've learned in my Honors classes have helped me um, with my nursing classes. Um, I definitely learned a lot in my first couple of honors classes about getting organized and getting things together. And it definitely really helped me start nursing. Um, so I would say if you're a nursing student out there and you're considering doing the honors college, don't hesitate. Um, it's definitely really helpful. I know it seems like mm -hmm. a lot, the two things, but I promise you they meld right together and it makes it a lot easier. 
I think one of the reasons it melds is we get a lot of really good nursing program, nursing mm -hmm. students. So instead of changing the nursing students, we change the program so that your requirements are that you will need to take a foundation of writing class. You will need to take a sociology class. You will need to take a psychology class and you will need to take a stats class so that you'll come in. We'll have you take the writing class that's required for nursing and we'll have you take a psychology class because those are pretty easy. We're going to say, save your honor stats class for the second semester so that you get acclimatized and we pick the best professors, right? And then you have your sociology class in honors. So all of your courses for the nursing major, the gen eds we have sequenced in so that you can take them. So the short answer is yes, absolutely. And actually, that's a great quote that you had there, Julie. Rather than changing the nursing program, you adjusted the nursing program so that way it is doable for any student, regardless of the program that they are in. Yeah, that, that, that's great. And we had another, we had a couple other follow-up questions, actually some great questions here from the group. Thank you very much. Um, how many students are accepted into the Honors College each year? And Julie, you can just stay unmuted. Uh, it oh, might be Oriana, easier. You're pretty popular. It. So as um, so we recently made the transition from honors program to honors college, which is absolutely awesome. So we are we are expanding. Um, we plan to accept about 120 freshmen into the class of mm -hmm. 2025, which is so weird to say 2025. Um, but we plan to have about 500 total students in honors once we accept the incoming class. Okay, so 125. Great. Um, let's see here. Um, how can I get a roommate in the Honors College Residence Hall? Dr. V, do you want me to take that? Yes, please. Um, so in addition to being a part of the Honors College, I'm also a community assistant, which is another fancy word for being an RA. <laughs> and I am an RA a CA in Lycoming Hall, which is the Honors Building. And that is placed Optimally, I would say, very close to both getting onto campus for classes next fall, hopefully, and close to Commons. It's a very lovely building. And um, as a member of the Honors College, for your first year, you will be required to live in Lycoming Hall in our learning mm -hmm. community. And you will go through the housing process pretty normally. If you mm -hmm. meet someone who is a fellow incoming freshman in the Honors Department, you will request them as a roommate if you would like, just like you would request anybody else. But Besides that, it is fairly likely that you will have an honors roommate no matter what, because based on how many students we are getting and how big the building is, it'll probably shake out that way. It's great. I highly recommend it. And the other thing, too, is the Honors College Residence Hall, like Homing Hall, is ideally located right next to the Chick-fil-A, the Qdoba, a Starbucks, and the University Store. I mean, that's prime real estate on the Bloomsburg University campus. I'm not going to lie. It uh, also has a 24-hour access to a printer, which is really great oh, when you're a freshman. I did not know oh, that. That's it right. It not only has that. It has but, more, yes. What Katie is not telling you <laughs> is that it also has a bunch of weirdos who hang out on sofas and couches mm -hmm. and study together and take care of each other. Yes. It's nice because everyone is kind of going through that experience at the same point in their life and doing the same thing. Um, so oftentimes for our prospective students, you know, they have a general idea of what a classroom looks like. You've been in school for the last 12 years. They have a general idea of what homework looks like. You've been doing homework for more than a decade. It's the living on their own part, um, not living with your family or your supporters. That can be, that's different. Um, however, I, I, I would like to alleviate as many concerns as possible for most students by the time they are done with their four years um, at Bloomsburg, they would likely tell you that that was probably the most positive part of their experience at Bloomsburg. Um, so there are a lot, a lot of cool experiences that come out of that. Um, and I'm sorry, we have some, some more great questions here. So um, what kind of COVID rules will be in effect for the fall se semester, specifically classroom and residence hall procedure. So I can speak to that a little bit. I know the university recently released a statement for the fall semester saying that we do plan to be um, on campus in person for the fall semester. Now, there are a lot of other details um, that, that are included in that, but we do plan to be in person, open for business uh, during the fall semester. And in fact, um, Angela, Angela is, is working here in the background. Would you be able to place that uh, press release 
on the Facebook uh, post. So that way for, for students who would like to read that in its full effect that they'd have the ability to do. So that's a, an outstanding question. Um, now we will still be following um, the recommendations uh, from the CDC as well, just to make sure that we are, um, you know, providing an experience that is safe for everybody. Yeah, but we do plan to be in person in the residence halls on campus for the fall semester. Great question. Um, how many freshmen are currently in the resident or in the honors college? Um, and again, that's 125 is generally what you admit. How many current freshmen do we have right now, though? Do you guys know that off the top of your head? You know, um, I have to say, I wish I had that information today. Angela, do, do you know how many freshmen we have? Brought? Well, we have 100. 114 people who are freshmen right now. Now, how many do we have for next year? Um, you know, we've been hit a little bit by COVID, but we expect to be close to that number. Sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, how many fret? Or no, we just answered that one. Um, are you required to live in the Honors College Residence Hall for two years? So you are required to live on campus for two years. But Julie or Katie or Orion, are you required to live in the Honors College? Okay, shaking your just head. Just the no. first year. Just the first year. Okay. So However, just. However, most people like living here and stay mm -hmm. because I don't know. We have cupcakes in the fridge. Did we mention we have you have printing access twenty four seven? See, Katie, the key is you have to end on the coolest thing, right? So. Wait a you minute. Know, cupcakes in the fridge. And yeah, well, cupcakes. Cup yeah, cupcakes is 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 definitely cool. I mean, Chick Fil A, Qdoba. I mean, that's you know compared to. I mean, printing is cool, but printing is pretty great. Yeah, <laughs> printing is. I would great. also okay. like to say um, the university offers a lot of different learning communities, and I know <laughs> as an education major, I could have went and lived in Columbia as mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was a lot of, before you could actually you had to live in Lycoming if you're part mm -hmm. of honors. I would definitely say that Lycoming is a much better experience because. Yes, I could have lived in a building with everybody in the same major as me, but I would have seen them all the time over the next four mm -hmm. years. And one of the great things about the honors and the great thing about living in Lycoming with the honor students is you get that diversity of different majors, different backgrounds, different experiences that helps you become a more well-rounded person. Mm -hmm. Yep, totally agree. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point to make. Um, all right, let me see here. Um, how do you put in your roommate profile that you are in the honors residence hall? Does that happen automatically? We take care of that. So okay. that once you accept honors, we send that list to the housing office. Um, but you are allowed to bring a roommate with you. All right. So you can bring a roommate with you. Okay. And I think that that's what, uh, that's what Luke was getting at here. Um, when does the rooming process start? And where can we start to look for possible roommates? So I can actually answer part of that. Um, the roommate, the rooming process has already begun. Um, and essentially what happens is, uh, Brendan, you would file what's called the housing or the My Housing application. Um, and that's where you would indicate um, some of your housing preferences if, you already, if you've already identified a roommate. Now, most students do not have a roommate going into college. They are more likely to identify a roommate through either our Facebook groups, the Class of 2025 Facebook group. We also have an Honors College Class of 2025 Facebook group. Um, Angela, if you could put those links um, in, in the, the chat, that would be helpful. Um, I would say that's probably where most students are going to, you know, potentially find a, um, a link. Oh, and we also have an Instagram um, profile for the class of 2025. And then there's also a questionnaire that you fill out on the My Housing application um, where the folks living in residence or the folks who are uh, managing residence life, they will likely try to pair you up with someone who has answered uh, those questions in a similar fashion. Um, so there's a number of ways that you can be placed. Um, again, the housing app, questionnaire, um, finding a roommate in the Facebook or Instagram groups, or just a friend, or frankly, someone who is in the honors college, I would say would be your top four ways to identify a roommate um, for, the, for the upcoming fall of 2021. I hope that, that answered your question. Um, and yeah, feel free to keep the questions coming. I mean, this can, I mean, this can be kind of like a free for all questionnaire moment here if you want. So um, we do have some questions for our panelists here though. So we'd like to get into the Q and A. And like I said, for anyone in the audience, if you have questions, please keep sending them our way. These are outstanding questions. So we really do appreciate that. Um, but the first question that I have for the group is what, um, what's your major? 
And what are your career goals? And we can start with Katie. Yeah, um, I am a dual major in early childhood and special education. So my certification will be in pre-K to four for the early childhood ed degree and K through 12 for special education. So okay. my goal after graduation is to go get a teaching job and then yeah. hopefully later on uh, get a master's in gifted ed. Sure. And, um, and so, Katie, you said you're in the dual certification program. So for anyone who isn't sure what that means, the dual certification program means that you will um, be dual certified in both elementary education and either special education or deaf education. Very rare program. Most schools are not going to have that. If you are an aspiring educator, the more subjects you are able to teach, the more likely you are to get a job. Um, and our special ed program, too, has been ranked very, very, very high. Um, it's held in, in very high regard. Um, I want to say top 25. I mean, it, it's, it's a very, very good. It's definitely a program that puts us on the map for a lot of students. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, Luna. So I am a communication studies major with a mm -hmm. focus in organizational communication. Uh, mm -hmm. Outside of that, I'm also in Army ROTC. I recently okay. just contracted, which means that when I graduate, I'll be commissioning as a second lieutenant or an officer in the mm -hmm. United States Army. Um, I am looking at military intelligence or military police. Nice. That. Uh, so I want to make a career out of it, and yeah. uh, I'm excited. So that's that's about my my future plans. Oh, Luna, that is such a, oh, that's awesome. Holy cow. Yeah, man, you got, you guys are all destined to make really big impacts here. I'm uh, feeling a little unaccomplished to be honest with you. Um, all right, great, great. Thank you, Luna. Um, Oriana. So I'm a biology major. Um, we actually have an accelerated master's program here at Bloomsburg. So instead of graduating in six years with your master's degree, you graduate in five. So I'm a part of that that and I'm a senior right now so I'm duly enrolled as an undergraduate and graduate student so I'm taking both classes right now so that's really fun and I also have a chem minor and Oriana I heard you say earlier you are also uh, going to be applying to medical school you like school yeah. yes yeah oh yeah I love it I mean I have to to keep going you know yes yes all right well do doctor uh is it Balasio am I pronouncing last name correctly Balasio, but that was close yeah, enough. Dr. Balasio. I mean, it's got a nice ring to it though. Dr. Balasio. I like that. Okay, great. Uh, Jen. Yeah, so I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me say it, um, <laughs> but I'm majoring in communication sciences and disorders, so speech pathology. Um, like I said, I'm going to grad school. I was just recently accepted, so I want to go for my master's, um, and then like I said, I participated in research here. Um, I applied to a few PhD programs that were combined, but they didn't want me right now. That's okay. I'll go back. I'll apply for it. Um, I'll eventually get my PhD and then I want to work in, there's kind of two paths that SLPs can take working in schools or the medical field. Um, so I'm going to go into the medical side of things. I want to work with strokes and aphasia. Um, mm -hmm. And I also want to do research in that area. Dr. Weston, and you've already said you want to teach at a college. That's kind of your end game here. So um, I'm hoping you'll find your way back here. You're like a boomerang and you'll come right back to Bloomsburg. That's what we're hoping. And uh, not only did you get admitted to a school, you got admitted to multiple schools, if I'm not correct, right? Yeah, yep, I got admitted to three recently, so I'm very okay. excited. Yeah, you're pretty popular. Okay, great. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Nellie. I mean, so I'm the graduate assistant for the Honors College, and so I'm in a mm -hmm. master's program here at Bloomsburg for college student affairs. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'm just kind of figuring out what specialty I want to go in on a college campus, um, so Definitely just want to be high up on, on a college campus, work at a university. Great. All right. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Nelly. Uh, Sophia. Um, so obviously, I, as I've said, I'm a nursing major. Um, my goals with that are to eventually get my master's and then mm -hmm. my doctorate so I can be a nurse practitioner. Yes. Um, anywhere. I'm trying to figure out what state anywhere um, that'll take me. But yeah. And Sophia, I will plug our grad programs. We also have the MSN and the DNP. Um, yeah. uh, just saying, <laughs> just saying, I mean, we have all those programs. It might, might behoove you to stay here. So just, you know, putting that on your radar. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have some other great questions from the audience here. Um, when can we register for freshman orientation? Um, registration for orientation will likely be available in, um, early to mid April. Okay. Uh, so those dates are not public yet. Um, but they like the registration for those, um, for your orientation dates will likely take place um, in, in orient or in, I'm sorry, in, in April. 
Um, that's a really good question though. Uh, is there an internship program with the Honors College? Sophia, take that one. Um, so yes, so a big part of our Honors College are there's tracks you can choose. Um, so one of the tracks is the internship track and basically, um, we can help you find an internship. Um, you will have a faculty member who can help you find an internship, something like that. Um, and you can find one that interests you. It does not have to go with your major. You can do one completely outside of the box, follow a passion, whatever makes you happy. Um, if you are an education major, a nursing major, something like that, and you have practicals or practicums or clinicals, um, anything like that, and you don't have like the space or you're worried about fitting an internship, you can also use your existing clinical practicum, anything like that as your internship. So it definitely doubles. Um, that's why I chose it because then I am killing two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. So definitely you have options with that, but yes, we do have an internship program. Now, are the internships, are they required? I guess it would probably be determined by the major that you're in as to whether or not the internship is a required component to graduate, right? Um, if you choose the internship track as your honors track, you do have oh, to complete okay. it for the honors portion of graduation. Understood. But, so um, even if your major oh, doesn't require, so even if your major doesn't require um, an internship, the honors college requires some type of capstone experience that might be in uh, an internship. Okay. Yeah. And that could be an internship. It could be research like some of the other people have done in uh, international service, anything like that. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, is there any special summer programming for honors college students prior to the start of classes in September? We should talk about that. Orion, well, any of you could. I can talk about it. Okay. Um, so, yes, short answer. Um, <laughs> One of the privileges of the Honors College is that we move in a little bit earlier than every other student on campus. So um, if, as of right now, classes are going to be starting Monday, August 23rd. So um, Honors students will start the move-in process one week before that on Monday the 16th, if I have my dates right. So during that week, you have orientation like normal with like the larger orientation groups from the university, but you also have opportunities with you are paired in groups based on your major with a honors mentor. Mm -hmm. That somebody in the honors program in your major and you, they take you on tours around town. Like they took us um, around campus to figure out where we had to go for classes. And you do a lot of other fun things too. Like a picture that we saw in the presentation, uh, they took all the honors students to Knoebels for a day. And that was really fun. A lot of great opportunities to meet people in the honors program mm -hmm. and make friends on campus. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> sure. It, and there will also be um, a, a multitude of different um, virtual events over the course of the summer. Now, these wouldn't necessarily be specific for the Honors College. It's part of what we call the Zoom with Bloom series. Um, and they will be weekly events hosted throughout the course of the summer. You know, it used to be 10, 15, 20 years ago, orientation. You would do all these things and pack them into one eight-hour day. Right. And hopefully you learned enough by the time you were going to start classes in the fall um, here at Bloomsburg. Now, your like your orientation process, your onboarding, getting you ready for Bloomsburg really begins long before that. Um, so we have a platform called the Bloombound, which is a, um, a virtual platform that you would do before you actually come to an in-person orientation. We have this um, these Zoom events throughout the course of the summer. There'll be one each week that's really built for students who have been admitted, pay their deposit, are planning to come to Bloomsburg. So that way it's you're not drinking from a water from a, from a water hydrant, right? Um, we onboard you a little bit at a time so it's a little more comfortable and the transition is, is a little more relaxed. Um, so again, you have the Bloombound online platform. You have an in-person orientation day on campus. Um, and then you'll also have these uh, Zoom with Bloom events throughout the course of the summer. So I know that was more than uh, what you had asked for there, but I thought this was a good time to explain a little bit about the orientation process. And again, you'll find out more about the orientation process in April. Um, let's see here. Is there a five-year master's plan for speech pathology or is it just six? Jen, do you know? Um, yeah, there's not a five-year path um, for this so you will have to go to school for four years and then apply for the two years master program but with that I honestly I was looking at some schools that did have 
um, the five-year master's program, but mm -hmm. I'm glad that I didn't go there because I think it's so much better to have the four years before and then the two mm -hmm. years after because you really focus, at least with Bloom, how they do it, um, mm -hmm. you really focus with your um, like information and like facts and stuff mm -hmm. like that before you move on to grad school, which is more clinical based. Um, sure. So I personally prefer it like that. So no, we don't have the five year, just the six year, mm -hmm. but I think it's much more, um, makes you much more prepared for your actual job in the future. Yep. And now I will say, even though we don't have the combined five-year program, we do have the, the master's in speech pathology and the doctorate in audiology at Bloomsburg. So like I said, that's definitely another one of our banner programs at the undergrad and the graduate level as well. Great question though. Um, is the honors college different from the PLP track? Who'd like to answer that one? So I, I, can, I, can talk, I can talk about it a little bit. Are uh, you PLP, in, Luna? I, I am in PLP. Okay. Yes. That, actually, sorry. Um, okay, go for it. So it's it's part of the program as a whole, uh, I think is a, is a good way to put it. Um, when you choose your track, uh, you kind of go about that with that leadership uh, in mind. Um, but you also get really great opportunities with PLP individually, as well as the honors program added in. So. Great, thank you. Um, besides an internship, what other tracks are available? The PLP. PLP, okay. <laughs> is, it, is it just those two then? No, no. I, I could take oh, okay. it. Yeah, go ahead, Ryan. Thank you, Dr. May. I can take it. Okay, go. So we have the undergraduate research track. We have the internship or practicum track. We mm -hmm. have the international experience track. We have the service and leadership track, which is also the PLP track. And then we have sure. the academic enrichment track. Okay. And what is, um, out of curiosity, what, what's academic enrichment track? What does that constitute? So the academic enrichment track is for people who don't really fall into any of those other categories, or aren't really interested in any of those. Okay. So we are required to take five total honors courses over the course mm -hmm. of our four years at Bloomsburg. But if you're in the academic enrichment track, you take eight total courses instead of the five. And then you have to write about the differences between the honors courses and the regular university courses from your experience. Gotcha. Okay. So you have a, a multitude of different options there. Um, are there scholarships associated with the Honors College? Oriana, you want to take that one? So as of right now, there is not necessarily a scholarship associated with the Honors College. All of our money goes toward our study abroad trip so that mm -hmm. all of our students who want to go on our study abroad over the winter to Poland can afford to do so. So we typically um, go go down the list of seniority of who gets the most money, what years, mm -hmm. so seniors, juniors, sophomores, freshmen, eh, but more so the older you get, the more likely you are to get funding so that you can go mm -hmm. if you want to go. And um, just, just so you know, too, there is, um, we do have uh, plenty of scholarship opportunities, um, but they are funded through the admissions office. In fact, Angela, could you please post um, our scholarship website and Sean Stout's email address. Sean Stout is our scholarship coordinator in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Um, so that he might be the gentleman that I would recommend reaching out to if you have any questions about scholarships. And that is a very, very good question. Yes, glad someone asked that. Um, does the first week of honors conflict with the marching band? Both require students to move in a week early. Great question. Luna. I I can talk about that real quick. So I know plenty of people who are in band and who are also in honors. Now I looked at doing band, but with ROTC, mm -hmm. it was just too much of a conflict. But I can say that both programs are willing to work with you. And it's just about communication on mm -hmm. your end. Um, you know, coming into college, that's one of your biggest, your, you're your biggest advocate. So mm -hmm. if you need to figure out your schedule and discuss a plan between, you know, Dr. V and your mentor with Welcome Week and the band director, that's kind of what you have to do. So it's, it's kind of up to you, but both of those parties are willing to work with you. Yep, so it sounds like the short answer would be yes, so that's good. Um, and thank you, Luna, that, that, that's a great answer. Yeah, I say Luna, yeah, I don't know how you would have had time for that. My goodness, you, just, you seem pretty busy as it is right now. Uh, let's see here, um, how, is, how is it balancing playing, oh, this is a great question. How is it balancing playing a sport and being in the Honors College. Do we have any student athletes on the call right now? Okay, so this is when I can kind of speak to you then. Um, so I know that they're certainly both compatible, 
Um, and, and honestly, it, it would probably make for a really excellent experience um, being both in the Honors College and being a student athlete at Bloomsburg. Um, now, the nice part about being a student athlete is, frankly, you live a very regimented life, and I mean that in a good way. Um, you know, normally for most incoming, fr you know, freshmen, the, the biggest adjustment period is what you do with all your free time. Like you're used to being in high school where you're block scheduled from seven to three or eight to four, and then you have practice or work or what have you afterwards. When you go to college, it's not like that. When you go to college, you have free time. So it takes a lot of personal, um, um, what's the word, uh, responsibility to be able to take that free time and not play mad, not go to the wreck and shoot hoops, not just read books for pleasure, right? To, to actually use that time wisely. Whereas if you're a student athlete, but like I said, your day is already kind of planned out for you. Um, so that's why I, I do feel like our student athletes do so well academically because they're held to a high standard because of that. So um, certainly compatible. Um, and I think like Luna had just recently mentioned, it's just going to be a big part of that is communicating your expectations in the honors college to your uh, coaching staff. And vice versa. Um, but certainly still compatible. I know we have students every year that are both student athletes in, in, in the Honors College. Great question. Um, if you attend a Husky Decision Day, is there anything specially done with the Honors College? Julie, you want to take that one? Sure, I'll take that one. Okay. Um, and I think the main thing I would say is that you can come down, we'll show, we'll show you our main space, the area we call the fishbowl where I'm sitting and upstairs where Katie is, we'll give you sort of a tour of the dorm is what mm -hmm. we do. Yep, it's a nice little little meet and greet. Um, and I, I mean, too, you, you get to actually see it too. I know with, with COVID and with the pandemic, it's been difficult for us to get students to campus just because, you know, we're trying to keep everybody safe. And, um, and I think most of you probably understand that. Um, but this is a good opportunity for you to experience, you know, life as it is happening and see where you will not only be, you know, learning, but also be living as well. Yeah, great question. Um, if you already did the housing app form, will they automatically know if you are an honor student because it wasn't an option? Katie shaking, Luna shaking their heads, yes, okay. Um, Katie, can you uh, explain that a little further? Yeah, so um, like Dr. V mentioned earlier, when you, um, get into the honors college um we get a list of everybody mm -hmm. who is in for the incoming freshman and then that list is then sent over to the residence life offices and so they put it in the system and they automatically know there's nothing you have to do on your end mm -hmm. yeah we our office of residence left does a very good job of um being aware of all these different things that are at play for an incoming student. So yeah, um, that's, that's good to know. Um, all right, so not necessarily related to the Honors College, but is there a list of clubs and activities I could take a look and I saw that we just posted a link and we do, we have so many clubs and orgs. In fact, this is, this is a great question um, that I wanted to pose to the group anyways. What are some of the other non-honors oriented clubs, orgs, activities that you were involved in and how are you able to balance some of those things with your academic and Honors College expectations? Katie. Yeah, so I do a lot of things here on campus. So in addition to being a CA, I am also in a club called Best Buddies, which if you are an education major, it will be one of three options for a, a special education major, I should say. Um, one of three options for a club that you have to be a part of to complete something for your teacher education packet. It's a lot of fun. You get paired with a um, special needs uh, person in the community and you get to talk and it's a lot of fun. And I'm also in the concert choir here at Bloomsburg. The music department is incredible. It's a lot of fun. There's a surprising amount of overlap between being in a music ensemble and then in the honors program. It's a lot mm -hmm. of fun. Yeah, and the nice part too about um, a lot of our um, musical and theater programs and dance as well is you don't have to be in that major to participate in those ensembles, right? So you can be an English major and still sing in our choir. You know, um, whereas at a lot of other schools, you have to be a music major to be in the band. You know, you have to be a theater major to participate in a, in a play. Um, at Bloomsburg, it's definitely not like that. I mean, you can come here and you can get the experience that, that you're looking for. And then Katie, the Best Buddies program, awesome, awesome program and organization. And again, um, you know, really making an impact on the community on individuals' lives. That's, that's a great program. Uh, Luna. Uh, so like I mentioned before, I'm also in Army ROTC. Mm -hmm. I'm also involved with the Bloomsburg University Student Veterans Association. Okay. I'm involved with the Bloomsburg University Equality Alliance. I also mm -hmm. am part of the Strength and Fitness Club. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the women's club rugby uh, photographer as well. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and a few other random things that I'm a part of, as well as being the uh, learning communities program assistant. So I work directly with all of the learning communities, as mm -hmm. well as obviously honors and and the rest of the good crew that we have there. Luna, so, let me rephrase the question. What are you not involved in? That might be <laughs> an easier question for you to answer. Yes, that's that's pretty obvious <laughs> question there. But um, yeah, so as you can see, I'm very involved as well as yes. honors. I hold a high GPA and mm -hmm. it's just about balance. It's about recognizing, you know, what you need to do for your schedule mm -hmm. and making sure that you take the time for yourself as well mm -hmm. as all of the things that you are in. So. Yeah. And, and Luna, we had a follow-up question specifically for you. Can you elaborate on the strength and fitness club? What are some of the activities that you do in strength and fitness? Like what's the, the weekly activities look like? Just so, talk about more about your involvement. Um, we actually got, got to start meeting back up at the rec here, but during non COVID nice. times we met uh, during the week, one, one time a week, and we do different lifting movements. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. one day we'd focus on working on a deadlift or focusing on the right technique for a mm -hmm. squat. Um, we also, you know, learn about different, you know, meal plans, uh, you can look at with fitness and dieting and, and all that stuff. So it's very, you can do, we do education based days where we look at different splits. We look at different mm -hmm. opportunities that we have as, as the group. Um, but we also do, you know, informational hands-on sort of things. We're getting back in the rec now. So we're doing, uh, we do a strongman competition where yep. you can compete, um, in the rec as well. And then we also go, you know, we do field trips as well. We had the opportunity last year to go um, to the Arnold. Uh, I don't know the full name of it, but it's a it's a lifting competition. If mm -hmm. anybody, you know, know a little bit about it, if you're into lifting. Um, mm -hmm. So there's so many opportunities outside of just, you know, the name strength and fitness. We do stuff yeah. in the gym, in the classroom and in the world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you, um, you guys all participate in competitions and yeah. yeah. So the, the Arnold, um, uh, was it, was it like the Arnold Invitational or something like it's in Columbus, yeah. Ohio, right? Yeah. And that, that's yes. a big deal. If you're, if you, if you're in that world, if you're into that kind of thing, that that's a big deal. Um, yeah. So actually the, the strength and fitness club is, is, it's a great organization to be a part of. Yeah. It's, it's very involved. Yep. Absolutely. Um, all right. Another question here. Um, what year do medical students in the honors college begin to dive into practicums and clinicals in the hospitals that Bloomsburg has to offer? It was pre uh, Oriana. So um, clinicals and practicals aren't a part of my specific major, but I do know that it's very major dependent what year you start. You mm -hmm. normally with clinical programs do two years at Bloomsburg of like normal education. And then once your junior year hits, you start going out into the real world with clinicals, practicums, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so in, um, there's not one, um, there's not one singular major that you can go into that would put you into medical school, right? You could be health sciences, pre-med, you could be exercise science. Um, you know, honestly, we have a pre-med minor um, and, or I'm sorry, a pre-med certificate as well that you could, you know, you could be a history major um, and still go on the medical school with that pre-med certificate. And you get to work with our um, pre-professional advisory board. In fact, we've done a departmental deep dive on our pre-med programs. We actually did a one, a two-part series um, that's on our, our Facebook video um, archives. I would recommend looking at, um, but there's a lot of different ways to, to get hands-on experience if your goal is to go to medical school. I would say a majority of our students um, who aspire to go to medical school will um, do a combination of um, shadowing, internships, and, and research um, as, as they're going through that process. That's a really, really good question. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I know we hit a lot of the questions I had. Or, I, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get through everyone um, Everyone giving an opportunity to, to respond to the initial question I posed. Sorry about that. So Oriana, I believe you are next. Yeah. So non-academically, um, the clubs that I'm involved in would be like bio club, mm -hmm. which seems academic, but we do a lot of things outside. So like we are um, required to do a lot of community service. So we've got in the community, we mm -hmm. volunteer at the Children's Museum downtown. We do a lot of fundraisers. Um, I'm also in Tri Beta Honor Society. So um, it's upperclassmen biology majors, and we offer tutoring for freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and lower mm -hmm. level courses that need that tutoring. And I'm also in the pre-med club, which is something I highly recommend joining if mm -hmm. you are pre-med because they really help you and they pair you with an older student yeah. right away so that they're kind of your mentor through everything, which is really helpful. And last year we had a 93% acceptance rate of BU students who applied to medical school. So our pre-med program, um, it, it, I mean, it's outstanding. 
I mean, it's really, really good. And the nice part too is, so when you go to medical school, it's not free, right? I mean, or, Oriana, you probably know this, yes. Um, so the value that you find in your Bloomsburg, you know, your degree in Bloomsburg um, helps spare some of the debt that you might incur at some other places. Um, Cause when you go to medical school, again, I don't, they don't really offer scholarships to my knowledge. So you're, you know, you're, you're funding that. So all that money is real. You have to pay that back. So um if you know you're going to be spending a lot of time in school, the idea of trying to take on as little debt as possible at the undergrad level is something that's advantageous. Yeah, thanks, Oriana. Uh, Jen. Yeah, so apart from honors, um, I'm also in NISHLA, which is um, stands for National Student Speech Language Hearing Association. Mm -hmm. um, so that's related to my major. Um, we go out into the community and do service as well. Um, there's an aphasia center in Danville, um, mm -hmm. which has been closed because of COVID recently, but um, the club often takes trips down there to kind of interact with the um, aphasic patients. Um, we also do fundraisers for the club and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I'm also in CGA, which takes up a big amount of my time. Um, that's our community government association. So mm -hmm. if any of you are in student government in high school and you're thinking about um, continuing that in college, CGA is like crazy important on campus. We do so much. We own the bookstore. We own Honeysuckle Apartments. Um, we do all the funding with that. And we also fund mm -hmm. every single club and organization on campus that asks for money, um, we are able to help them and fund them as well. So we just had our six hour long budget meeting the other day. <laughs> it's really fun. Um, so yeah, that's something that I'm also involved with. Um, I'm also in BOG, which is a scholarship um, club, I guess, program, you could call it. Um, and we do service hours for that as well. Um, I'm a mentor for that program. I also work as a tutor and I work as a tour guide and in the admissions office. Yeah, and I'm, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little disappointed that the tour guide thing was like a throw-in at the end there. I was. I know. I'm always thinking like, like I'm thinking like clubs, clubs, clubs work. So. <laughs> yeah. So Jen is also a superstar tour guide. In fact, um, anyone who has any of those interests, Jen did a really good um, day in the life video on our campus real channel that I can follow up with later. And I, I mean, Jen, what you talk about, like. Um, or part of your video, like you actually follow Jen, like she's wearing a GoPro, um, is you go to CGA meeting, you go to class, um, you're going to work on research, like it's really specific. So um, it, it's, and it was pre-COVID too. So, um, you know, you'll get a chance to see what, what her life was like. So she's, she's a busy person. Um, Sophia. Hi, so I am a tour guide, just like Jen. Um, I figured I'd throw it in there for you. At the yeah, beginning. yeah, I don't ask for much. Yeah, that's, that's the top of the resume right there. Yeah, um, I love that. It's definitely a great thing to get involved that's with. That's the right answer. Um, we have a huge work study program on campus. So if that's something you're interested in, you could be a tour guide, other things like that as well. Um, I'm in Student Nurses Association. So obviously it's like the nursing club. Um, we do service activities, fundraisers, things like that. Um, I'm in Aging Special Interest Group. Um, mm -hmm. So basically we communicate with the elderly that are in um, like long-term facilities, things like that in the area. And we um, just try to figure out what we can do for them. Right now, um, I have a pen pal who lives in like an area in Bloomsburg. So it's definitely really cool that you get to reach out with that. I'm also in Students Helping Honduras. So we do fundraisers to help build schools for in Honduras. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Sophia. Um, so we had a couple more questions then. Um, where is the best place to buy books? Um, I can take that one. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so like I just mentioned, like two seconds ago, um, CGA owns our bookstore. So I actually see where all the revenue from that goes. Um, so my personal recognition, and if you've had me on tour, I mm -hmm. say this every single time, um, buy your books from the bookstore. You can buy used, you can buy new, you can rent them, you can do it online, mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, all the profit goes right back into the school, which is really awesome. So I see where all that money goes. It goes right into the campus, whether it's like improving the rent halls, improving care union, improving um, the rec center, which we just like mm -hmm. redid and we funded all of that, um, improving honeysuckle apartments if you live there. Um, we also, like I said, we fund all of our clubs and orgs. Yep. So like you're kind of like paying for your experience here by like, yeah, and you're just giving back to the school by buying it at the bookstore. So um, honestly, they have really competitive prices for renting and for buying your mm -hmm. books there. Um, so you're really not going to find like a much better price on Chegg, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and at that, like, why would you give your money to like Amazon when you could give it back to the school that you're going to be spending four years at. So that's my personal um, advice. And also I just saw the other question. So this speech path related club is called mm -hmm. Nishla, um, N S S H L A. Wait, no, wait. No, I think that's right. I think that's right. National student speech language hearing association. It's a mouthful. 
Yeah. So there are when you go to college or if you move to Washington, D.C., there are a lot of alphabet soup organizations. So you're going to have to learn some of these um, all, all these acronyms. Everything has an acronym to be short. So the yeah, initial is definitely one of the tougher ones to remember. So, you yeah, know, well, well done, Jen. Um, let's see here. And I think we had most of the questions here. So I have one final question here. Uh, I know we're coming up on an hour here um, for the, the, the students in the group. Um, what is an average day like for you? Walk us through an average day. And for and real quick, for those of you who have done the study abroad experience, walk us through your average day during the travel. Okay, Katie. Okay, so I guess I'll start with like an average day with as far as the study abroad goes, which is weird because no day was average. But um, if I had to be as general as I could on like a day where we had class and not a travel day, mm -hmm. um, we would get up, you would go have breakfast in like little canteen and you'd go to your classes. You would you take two classes while you're on the trip. Mm -hmm. So you're in you're in class in lecture for about three hours total a day, about an hour and a half for each mm -hmm. over the over the two weeks. And then the rest of the day, you're just kind of let loose. You get to experience the city, you get to go adventuring, find cool things. I found a really cool bookstore. And of course, you also have different trips, like different weekend trips. Like we went to Budapest, um, we were in different, we were in Warsaw for New Year's. Mm -hmm. And um, you also do, uh, one of the weekends, you do make a trip to Auschwitz, which is a very important part of the trip, probably one of the most important parts of the trip. And you also get to do other stuff. Like we went to a salt mine, which is really cool. And you can challenge mm -hmm. your friends to see how many walls you can lick because it's salt. Don't know how that's going to work, uh, sure. considering pandemic, but as far as um a yeah don't, normal... don't do that during the pandemic yeah just, yeah don't, don't do that during the pandemic. bad idea um as far as like a normal day at school for me mm -hmm. it's a lot of um doing classes in your room right now but whenever i have free time i am up here where i am currently in our honors lounge because my friends are up here and we like talking to each other while we do our homework or pretend mm -hmm. to do our homework and it's just you know a lot of group working together Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have dumb arguments about um, things like whether or not the Kool-Aid man is the jar or the, the, the Kool-Aid inside the jar. That's deep. That's deep. We, we get into some fun conversations. Real up here philosophical. Okay. All right. But that's where I spend most of my time. And I can honestly say that I have the best friends of my life because of the Honors College. That's a, that's a really good answer. You're going to find yourself on a billboard somewhere. That's good. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Luna. So I did a travel program with the Honors College, so I'll peep that in there as well. I climbed Mount Washington uh, in New Hampshire uh, the first, the second weekend of my freshman year. Um, and the busiest day that we had was I was up at 4 a.m. And we were on the mountain by 5 a.m. And I climbed from 5 a.m. till 10 p.m. Uh, and then got to eat almost a whole pizza by myself afterwards. Uh, Luna, you, you, you deserve it after that. <laughs> You yeah, deserve so, it. So we climbed to the top of Mount Washington, almost the top. My group uh, was about, I'd say, probably an eighth of a mile away from the top. And we had yeah. to make some group dynamic uh, decisions there. Um, but that's my that was that day. But a normal day for me with ROTC wise is um, I'm up at uh, 5 a.m. I have PT from 6 to 7 a.m., which mm -hmm. is our physical training. Wait, then, wait, 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 wait. What time do you wake up? Uh, 5 a.m at least five days a week. <laughs> so, yeah. And then- Luna, uh, you are far tougher than me. <laughs> Way so, tougher than me. So an hour of physical activity with the program in the morning. And then yeah. I, uh, this semester, I have class from about 9.30 to 10.30, uh, okay. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and then Tuesday, Thursday, I have some classes more in the afternoon, but then I go to work mm -hmm. uh, from noon to five on campus. And then usually, uh, cause I'm in extra stuff with the ROTC program, I have to go for a rock or a run, which a rock is a weighted pack uh, march, basically. Oh my um, gosh. So last night I did uh, <laughs> five miles at 6 p.m. And, and was out till probably about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. But Luna, I'm tired, just, I'm tired just listening to the things. I'm not even <laughs> just listening to the things that you're doing right now. I don't think I can drive a car for that long. Yeah, that long so run. Okay. It's, it's all part of the fun. And yeah. in between then and there, I figure out when to eat, when to work out extra and when to do my homework. So do you drink coffee? 
I do not. I actually have only had one cup of coffee in my entire life. I like Okay. Tea. All right. All right. I can't listen to this anymore. All right. I feel about this big. All right. I'm done. I can. Okay. Moving on. No, I'm kidding. Luna. That, that's really impressive. Really, really impressive. Oriana. So a lot of my time is spent in the lab, whether it's the research lab or the labs that are associated with my classes. Mm -hmm. um, as a science major, most of my core classes have a lab associated with them. So on top of the normal three hours a week I spend in lecture, I also spend three to four hours a week in the labs, which is really fun because you get to actually put all of the theories that you learned about into action. You get to like see things happening, which really mm -hmm. enforces what you just learned in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And then most of my nights as of late have been spent doing the interviews for the prospective honors students, the incoming freshmen, and I get to meet all of them. And it's such an exciting time because I'm so excited for them. What's your favorite class that you have right now, Oriana? Right now I'm taking virology, um, which is okay. really awesome because of like the state of the world right now. So it's really relevant and we haven't learned about coronaviruses yet, but we're getting okay. really excited. So, I mean, obviously I know what virology is, but just for the audience's edification here, what uh, virology is? The study what? of viruses. Study of virus. Yeah, yeah I'm, I knew that. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, so you said, like, what are you learning about right now? Like, what, what's the topics you guys are covering in class? So we actually just learned about polio virus. Okay. Um, we learned about how it gets into our body, gets into mm -hmm. our cells, how it replicates, and why um, the virus causes the symptoms that it does based on okay. the different cells that they attack. Mm -hmm. Wow. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. That's really interesting. All right. Wow. Okay. And or are you applying for med school yet? Are you in that yes, process? I yeah. am taking the MCAT during the summer, which is when I'm going to start getting all of my application materials. All right. Later. Good luck. Thank Good you. Good luck. Oh, that doesn't sound like you're going to need it. Good. Jen. Yeah. So um, usually I'll, I'll talk about my experience like pre-COVID because I feel like COVID is more there you go. COVID will um, end it. <laughs> so usually I'll wake up. I'd be on campus by like nine for my classes. Mm -hmm. I would usually do like class tour, class tour, class tour, tutor. That's <laughs> like how it went. Mm -hmm. um, then somewhere after that, I would usually um, go to the rec center and like play volleyball with my friends. Um, I was also part of intramural volleyball. Which Wait, I'm what's sure. volleyball? Oh, volleyball is like, um, then you take the racquetball courts and you like set up a volleyball net in there and you like hit okay. it off the walls. Oh, that sounds like fun. It usually ends up just bouncing off my head instead, but that's okay. okay. So yeah. Um, as long as it doesn't touch the ground, right? Yeah, no, that's, it's fun. Um, I've really, really missed that since, um, like, we can't be in that enclosed space anymore because of COVID, but, um, so yeah, and I also was a part of um, intramural um, soccer and volleyball, and I'm literally, like, nice. the worst athlete ever, so <laughs> it's really fun, um, but it's just a good way to, like, de-stress after class and, like, yeah. um, having tour and tutoring and doing all that, um, and then I also um, would go to my club meetings and stuff. I usually have um, BOG events, um, so, I have to attend like a bunch of um, career development events, basically. So those are usually at nighttime. And then my initial events are Wednesday at seven. So um, I kind of do class tour, class tour, class tour, tutor mm -hmm. events. Or yeah. Now I, yeah now you, you and Luna are probably in a competition every day to see who takes more steps, but you know, with the, with the Fitbit oh, step counters. Be, <laughs> no, I know Luna's probably getting like 40,000 steps. A day. Like you're taking more steps before I even wake up, you know, it, it's, you guys are both putting me to shame. I got I to gotta get in gear here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Nellie. I mean, so I've only done college in COVID. So my, my schedule is pretty like based around my room. <laughs> um, sure, yeah. And so I wake up in the morning. I have a morning meeting with Angela and Julie, and we figure out what we're doing for the mm -hmm. day, seeing where we're all at. Um, then usually I'll work on something mm -hmm. for the honors, answer some emails, um, depending if I have class, because <laughs> I do have one day that's just all classes now. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of times there's an honors event at night that I attend either via okay. Zoom. And now sometimes I get to go in the office. So nice. I will walk myself down and do some work there instead of my bed. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, what's your favorite class that you have right now? Um, my favorite class right now is um, helping in college student affairs. Okay. Um, so just... Oriana knows she just helped me with a little project. So um, that's probably my favorite class right now. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Nelly. And uh, Sophia. Um, so a day for me, I'll do like in COVID times, just so that you get an idea. Um, so day for me, I, it depends what kind of day it is, but normally I get up, I give a tour, um, mm -hmm. usually around 945. 
Um, and then I go back and then I'm on class for about five, six hours straight. Um, so that's fun. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have like club meetings. Um, I usually go to the rec. Um, mm -hmm. I try to weed in friend time as well. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Um, on my clinical days, I'm up at four um which is not fun but it's only twice a week every 4 a.m yeah it's not fun um i guess waking up at 4 p.m wouldn't make sense yeah yeah no i don't think so but yeah I wake four, up at four. okay so you beat luna up luna hey you got a challenge he does it much more often than i do i'm sure <laughs> but um but yes yeah, so i'm up around 4 a.m and then um i have to go to the hospital luckily they put me at um a hospital it's not too far so it's like 15 minutes away um, oh is it uh, geisinger Geisinger Danville yeah yep, I live right down the road from there yeah yeah it's very easy commute um so then I go there and then I'm there from about six to about 12 30. And what department um, are you in right now? Um right now I'm doing what's it called it's not just palli it's med surge and palliative care um okay. the floor we're on is mostly palliative care but mm -hmm. we are seeing like the med surge patients we're not really okay. seeing okay. so that's definitely cool um, but then I go back to campus. I usually go to the rec if I'm not exhausted. Um, and then I do a lot, a lot of schoolwork. Um, yeah. that's a typical day for me. I don't, it's a lot, a lot of busy. Yeah. I was going to say, how about it? Yeah. Jeez. 4 a.m. Um, all right. I, I lied. I have one more final question, but before we get to that here, um, let's see here. This is not necessarily related to the honors cause, but when do, all right. So when do incoming freshmen get to make their schedule? So this year, um, incoming freshmen, um, I believe, will be making their own schedule to a certain degree, and more information will be going out um, in the month of April. So April is a big month. Uh, you find out more information about orientation and also about your uh, your your fall semester schedule for uh, 2021. But that is a really good question. Um, final question: favorite place to eat on campus? Just real quick, Katie. Um, probably, um, Husky Lounge, which is sadly okay. closed this semester, but it's going to be open. It will be fall. reopened. Absolutely. It will be. Their bagels are the best thing in the world and they give mm -hmm. me life. They give you life. A lot of people don't know that about bagels. They give you life. Yeah, I agree. I like, I'm a big Husky Lounge fan as well. I agree. Luna. I think I'm stuck between Husky Lounge or Commons just to see Chip. That's yeah yeah and That's for those of you who don't know chip chip works at the commons and she's she just a she's a sweetheart such a nice lady and she loves working at bloomsburg she takes a lot of pride in working at bloomsburg and and yeah it, it, we all love chip too yep absolutely very very nice lady yeah the, hard to grow on the commons commons is buffet style all you can eat um it's hard to beat that to be honest with you uh oriana well, aside from those, we also have a Qdoba Chick-fil-A and Steak and Shake on campus that you could use your flex dollars at, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. So when you're not in the mood for the buffet style or Husky you might not have what you want, you always have those backup options. And my mm -hmm. personal favorite is Qdoba. I do like Qdoba. Yeah, it, yeah. it appears that Luna and Nellie both agree with you. Yeah, I, 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 I frequent Qdoba myself. Yes. Uh, Jen. I definitely have to agree with Katie. Um, part I forgot to add in my routine. Um, it was like class tour, get a bagel from Husky Lounge class mm -hmm. tour, like every day. Mm -hmm. It definitely wasn't wasn't a good idea to eat a bagel every day, but I did. Um, and also Subway is really good. I'm a big Subway girl. I still yeah. live on campus now that I live off campus. I still go on to get Subway like all the time. Subway, how do you wrong with Subway? All right, okay, uh, Nelly. I am here for Chick Fil A breakfast. <laughs> Oh, chicken breakfast. Minis. Yes. That's an interesting take. All right. I love chicken minis more than like their regular chicken. I want chicken okay. minis every day. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Chick-fil-A person myself. I, I mean, I, I don't eat anything, but um, I do like Chick-fil-A as well. All right. Don't look at the calorie count on the on the milkshakes. I made that mistake the other day. It's like a full day's worth of calories in, in, in a milkshake. Though, so it's, don't look at it. Uh, Sophia. Mine is definitely Chick-fil-A and it's dangerous for me because I live in Salts. So I'm mm -hmm. right above Chick-fil-A and Cordova. Um, so the temptation's definitely there, um, but I'd have to say Chick-fil-A. I think it's so cool that we have one on campus. I know, I know. it's very convenient. I know. So that is, um, 
all we had for tonight. In fact, we ran a little over time and Dr. Vandeveer actually had another meeting to run to. She is a busy lady um, having another meeting at seven. Um, so I know she uh, would extend her, her thanks and, and her best wishes to everyone in the audience. If anybody has any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, at least I, I should say myself and, and Julie and, and Angela, you know, we work for you throughout the course of this process and we love to do so. So anything we can do along the way, let us know. Um, we have Husky Decision Days coming up. So those are um, receptions for students who have been admitted to Bloomsburg and there will be an honors component where again, it's a little meet and greet. You can take a tour of, of the residence hall um, and in the facility where you might be and you get to see campus and get to meet some of the awesome people from the honors college. But um, we look forward to talking with everybody and have a wonderful night.